Hello everybody and welcome back to Scalaris where this looks a lot different. Version 3.9 is out and I would like to take a look at this. This actually slipped by me. I didn't realize this was coming out 10 days ago as of when I'm recording this. So that's absolutely fascinating. We're just going to go through some of the headline features here before diving in. To be clear though, I do want this to be a somewhat limited series. So we're probably going to go with a smaller galaxy than usual. Because we know that we've got a Hearts of Iron release coming up in about, I think, a month or so. So we're going to be playing this for a while, but we're going to have this be a, a smaller series than a lot of our previous Stellaris series have been. So first off, let's hop over to the uh, forum here. Let me get zoomed in a little bit. Oh, that's a little too much zoom. Okay, there we go. This seems about fine. So we're just going to go through this real quick here. These are just the headline features. Updated habitats. Habitats have been limited to one per system. Okay, thank you. But a variety of orbitals can now be constructed around planetary bodies to expand the livable space and resources available to the habitat central complex. Potentially interesting. We'll see how that works out. Softer leader cap. Now follows a non-linear curve that will never reach 0% experience gain. Okay interesting soft capping the leader levels i don't hate that traders not traders reworked the trade jobs adding a new specialist trader job which takes the place of the merchant ruler job in most places probably for the best there get having that be a specialist rather than a ruler job clerks now produce slightly more amenities and slightly less trade value rebalance trade buildings and many traditions that affected trade okay so more amenities less trade value can work with that Machine intelligences and hive minds can now choose more origins than ever before with the ability to choose the common ground, hegemony, lost colony, or void dwellers' origins. Hive minds only. A powerful energy parasite may infect your power grid. Will you indulge it or destroy it? Okay. And new story events, bug fixes, performance, AI modding improvements, and more. So that's the new features, and we've got the species pack features here. So, Blooming Additions, so these are features added to each of the species packs. So, for Plantoids, we can spread seeds. Cool. Necromancy for Necroids. That sounds exciting. We've got Lithoids, being able to uh, play as industrious space rocks with the Void Hive Civic. Cool. We might go for that Necromancer, by the way. They can now re reanimate fallen Leviathans and create Cyborg zo Zombies? Eh, maybe not. I don't know. That's not exactly what I was thinking of. We'll, we'll see. Speaking of friends, yeah, humanoids. So they can now benefit from hating their neighbors just a little more with the Enmity Tradition Tree, which unlocks powerful bonuses for declaring enemies your rivals, plus two new portraits and three new species traits. Okay. And finally, Mega Corpse. Redistribute your wealth. Okay, cool. So that seems fine. These are kind of minor things. Some of these are potentially, particularly the updated habitats and the trader rework, might be kind of impactful. I also see this cooperative option, which is absolutely interesting. I don't know what's going on with that. It's just like a multiplayer where you can't fight against the enemies, like against the other players, maybe? I don't know. Regardless, we're going to play a new game here. This menu is definitely reworked. We're going to play a new game here, and we're going to be playing not as the Atreides Interstellar Construction Company. We're going to be creating a new empire here. I want this to be kind of military-focused. I'm kind of bad at making military-focused factions in Stellaris, so we'll see how it goes. I kind of want it to be maybe like machine. I'd like it to be like mech-focused, ideally. What if it was Battletech focused specifically? <laughs> that could be kind of exciting. And it would be like the inner sphere. I, I don't know. That, that would be maybe a bit much. We could certainly think about something that is machine focused for sure. Like bees. Bees are very machine focused. Definitely. Actually, let's do it. Name. All caps. Bees. That's a singular name as well. The plural name is bees, naturally. And the adjective is, ouch. Th this is not going to go well. Th this is going to read terribly. <laughs> We're going to not do that, probably. Well, maybe we'll have it be bees. The adjective is bees. Actually, let's have the adjective be stinger. Perfect. I like it. So we're going to go with kind of, I mean, we're robot bees, right? We're robot bees. 
It's interesting that there's no insectoid. I guess arthropoid kind of fits that. But we would end up going with machine, I think, because we are robo bees here. Unit B1. That's kind of ideal. Okay, I think that that's decent. Yes, I like it. Trait points. Power drills, obviously. We've got drills as stingers, right? That's that's definitely a thing that's happening here. What else do we have? Mm, repurposed hardware. I mean, that's kind of the definition of us here. We are also potentially luxurious. Pop assembly cost going up. And we've got two additional picks that we can do here. Hmm. Perhaps we are custom made. So we're bad at growing our pops. But then we're very good at everything else. Minerals from jobs. Uh, we could go for research here. And we actually have a trait point left. So we could actually ditch luxurious and go for just a minus one. Like, for example, there's bulky, there's uncanny, there's high maintenance. I actually would rather get luxurious than these other minus ones, to be honest. We could just ditch custom made and go for something along the lines of luxurious. We'd have a trait pick left, but that's fine. I think we're okay with that. We would choose probably a relatively dry-ish world, like an arid world, maybe? Shazu. And we'll we'll just have this be completely completely random. Well, there's a lot of star systems nowadays. Okay. We're gonna go with like Mecha's Prime. That was an interesting one. Sure. We'll go with M Mecha's Prime. Okay. And the star name was Mecha's. I like it. So that'll be absolutely fine there. Our city appearance. Oh, wow. There's 29 rooms. I guess they've opened up all of the room types. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Uh, we'll go for something along the lines of an arthropoid city or perhaps a... Hmm. Yeah, I think arthropoid would be what we'd go for here. Maybe even Reptilian. Uh, we'll go with Arthropoid. Cool. It's the bees, after all. So what can we choose as our origin? We are robot bees. <laughs> what do we got for an option for robot bees? Uh, we've got a Slingshot to the Stars. No, that's obviously not what we're going for. Broken Shackles is the challenging origin. Uh, yeah, the species from pre-FTL civilizations across the, the galaxy... Okay. Initial pops minus eight. That's a lot. Bees. What are bees? Well, they fly around. They gather up, gather up pollen. And they've got stingers. And they build hives. So maybe we can build something out of that. So hives, right? Hive mine definitely makes a lot of sense here. Common ground does not. Necrophage. Progenitor hive, perhaps. This hive has gained evolutionary advantage through semi-independent leaders. So, right. The progenitor ships. Constructing the offspring ships. Yeah, I remember this mechanic being kind of annoying when I streamed this. We're probably not going to go with that. Maybe we're underground robot bees. Actually, that's kind of funny. We're underground robot bees. I like it. We're, of course, going to go with hive mind. We are going to have to be gestalt consciousness, and we are hive mind. So we could have... We could go for a devouring swarm. I don't think we're going to. I do want, like I said, for this to be a relatively militaristic thing. The bees aren't really interested in conquering others. They just don't see them as anything other than obstacles, right? It's not like an unethical thing. It's not like waging war. They just don't see them as living things. They are, they're merely obstacles to be overcome. That is it. So in that case, we would go with like a natural neural network. Definitely. 
and like organic reprocessing. Uh, that gives us catalytic converters. I'm not sure if we actually want that. Void hives. Automatically generate mining and research stations over a random unexploited deposit in a system we own every four months. Lacking the technology to exploit it reduces the output of it by 75%. Directly building it will have an additional build cost. Interesting. That's really interesting. Huh. Let's do it. That sounds fascinating. Myself is a prison for which only we have escaped. Yes, indeed. We are a hive mind. This is fine. Uh, what is wrong here? Requires machine intelligence authority? Oh, because we have a machine portrait. So we need the machine intelligence rather than the hive mind. Okay, so we can't actually be robo bees. That makes me very sad. If we want to have all of this going on, we have to be regular bees. Yikes. Okay, I suppose we can do that. We can go to be like regular bees, right? So what would a regular bee look like here? None of these are really very bee-like. Hmm. I wish it wasn't tied to appearance. That, that would be nice. Or if there was at least an option to not have it be tied to appearance. Because I do want to be Robo-Bees. But I think instead we may have to be some sort of other, like, insectoid race. What about shrimp? We could be shrimp. Hives of shrimp. I don't know about that. There's these guys who are, like, fleas or something. And there's these roaches. Yeah, that's all fine. But none of them have, like, the bee feel, right? I guess we could be butterflies and say, maybe they've got stingers down there. We'll just pretend they're bees. That could work. That could work. So, traits, of course, we're no longer able to get these, which is sad. We'll have to redo this. And industrious, I think, I mean, there's a bee right there. Mm. We are hive-minded and cave dwellers, which are required. Absolutely. I don't know. I liked that concept that we had going on. Unfortunately, it wasn't going to be allowed. So in that case, we could instead end up going for something like existential heteroparity. I'm unfamiliar with that word. But I'm guessing it's like iterative and parody smashed together. I don't know. Pop growth during war is interesting. We are planning on going to war a lot, right? So that would work. We could also do something like slow learners and then quarrelsome, perhaps. And then we would end up going with something like intelligent. Sure, that works. So then our empire name is, of course, going to be the Stinger Entity. With our adjective being Stinger, I guess. And that, of course, means that we are, in fact, able to go with these traits. I don't love the butterfly. I don't love the butterfly. I kind of want to change it, but I want to keep it arthropoid at this point. We could have it be like these guys. They're more spidery. It's not really what I'm looking for, but I guess spidery kind of works. Or these guys, they're kind of spidery too. That could work, and ruler being female does make a lot of sense for an, an insect society. That should be absolutely fine. And I also think that we should probably consider changing off of our machine name lists. So let's go for an arthropoid name list then. So, or a hive mind one. I think Arthropoid. This one works. Cool. So that sounds fine. Our ruler is going to be Oberzoof. Cool. Unspent trade points. What? 
ruler traits. Oh, right, ruler traits. We haven't interacted with this system yet. So we could be principled for plus stability, minerals from jobs, edicts fund, stability and amenities, ship upkeep and army upkeep. That's kind of nice. Okay, let's save that and let's do this. So we're not gonna be playing on huge. We're going to be resetting this to default. Do we play on medium or do we even go down to small? I kind of think we go down to small. This is intended to be <laughs> cadet difficulty, please. <laughs> Uh, we'll do late game scaling difficulty Grand Admiral, but that'll be fine. I like scaling difficulty personally. I just think it's interesting. And AI aggressiveness will be normal. Yeah, this seems absolutely fine. Iron Man is off. That's fine. We're going to be on small size galaxy. Okay, let's do this. This is intended to be a kind of shorter series, but we are still planning on conquering the galaxy. We'll see how that goes. Well, other beings on Mecha's Prime, we never changed that name, but I guess we're Mecha's as well, would spend their nights out in the wilds. Our ancestors soon learned the wisdom of underground dwellings, sheltered from harsh light and climates. Easy access to the minerals below ground altered our stinger predecessors to industrialize, uniting our species and furthering our cavernous civilization. There were numerous attempts to return to the surface, but each time it proved brutal and unforgiving, so we remained below establishing our dominance from within our planet's very foundations. Now, with the discovery of our first hyperdrives, we make our boldest attempt yet to reach out to the stars. And like our ancestors before us, we shall carve out homes from this darkness. Excellent. So we don't actually want to build these. In fact, we physically can't do it right now because we lack the unity. So, hypothetically, if we were to come out over here, we'd be looking at building this. We lack the unity to build this, but we don't want to build it. It will actually build itself. So, that's fascinating. Looking at our position here, we should probably head out over here. So, we would come out and survey over this way, and we would move our construction ship out here. These will build themselves over time, every four months. So, that seems absolutely fine. That'll actually push us into quite a lot of expansion, which is interesting. I definitely think physics research and, I mean, just getting flat unity off the bat isn't bad. I would normally go for this. We're going to go for the unity. And in this case, we're going to go for the nanomechanics. That'll be fine. On our capital, what do we have going on here? Okay, so we've got ourselves a spawning pool here. That's fine. We've got a synaptic node. And we've got a research lab. I wouldn't mind building another research lab, but we are, of course, short on our minerals. We're going to bump this up to fast, fast speed. Not fastest yet. We'll get there. Oh, this definitely feels faster than it used to on fast speed. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Seems fine. So we're going to survey out over here. We can see one of these have already been built. And that's absolutely great. So after we're done with this survey, I want to come out over here. I would also like to produce ourselves another ship here. So we actually need to go to our shipyard. And we would need to produce a science ship. And we'll get that done. We've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Nashira 4. They must have been active in this region of space approximately 12 million years ago, judging by the age of the artifacts. From what they've been able to piece together, our scientists theorize that these aliens, who called themselves the Voltom Star Assembly, were worm-like annelids, roughly three to four meters in length, that communicated with each other primarily through vibrations carried along their segmented bodies. Our situation log is updated. The ISS Zof Luar has made a startling find on Nashira 4. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we've encountered life forms that did not originate on Mecha's Prime. It only took us five months. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Nashira 4 are sapient, it's likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out here. Okay. So that's all good. We're going to need a second, a second survey ship, of course. We've confirmed the first material traces of intelligent alien life on a foreign world, and we've confirmed the existence of lower forms of organic life outside of Mecha's Prime's biosphere. Cool. Our recent encounter with alien life forms has brought forward the need for us to decide how we should re react towards any potentially intelligent alien civilizations we may meet. 
One possibility would be for us to seek to establish peaceful contact with them as soon as possible by sending them the information necessary for them to translate our communications. Yeah, that's not happening. This may, however, prove imprudent should they have hostile intentions towards us. The safest option would be to proceed with caution and attempt to communicate with them without giving them too much information on ourselves. On the other hand, we could make more aggressive moves to both find out more about them and ward them off from our territories. However, this would be sure to antagonize them. We're going to ward off those who would threaten us. Absolutely. So we're going to finish up our second science ship here. We'll need an empty leader slot filled here. What do we have for leaders? Four of six. Okay. So who do we want here? Leader lifespan, anomaly discover chance, and research, or rather, anomaly research speed. Yeah. We'll go for the discovery chance. That'll be fine. And we're going to head out to Lachium and then head over to Terrazed. Cool. So that'll be absolutely fine. This is definitely a smaller galaxy than I'm used to. 400 stars, but that's okay. So our construction ship is chilling in Nashira right now. We're going to want to build our star base here as soon as that's fully surveyed. For the time being, I think having this... Actually, we, we might want to have these just be on automatic at this point. Yeah, just explore and survey. Nothing other than that. That'll be good. And do we want an additional science ship? We have the leader capacity to do it. Let's get going on that. So that'll be fine. We, of course, are going to want to settle on Nashira 3 and even Nashira 4 as soon as we can. So we'll get those done soon enough. This science ship is ready to go. And we are going to recruit in, at this point, I think Anomaly Research Speed will be okay. And we'll put you on automated science, or rather automated surveying as well. Phenomenal. So we're cruising on forward here. We do have 11 alloys per month, which isn't a lot of alloys. We want to consider our, our fleet situation, right? So let's hop into our ship designer here. And we currently have small mass drivers and nuclear missiles. Sure, I don't like having deflectors on Corvettes. You, you may or may not be aware of that. We're not going to auto-design these. We're going to do that. Cool. We can also do a reactor booster if we wanted to have, like, the additional... Ooh, that's a very low evasion. Base of 63.1. Huh. That's a very low evasion rate. Well, for now, we're going to do this, and we'll get these guys upgrading. So they'll get done eventually. We have surveyed the system. And there's Nashira done. So we're going to need to build a starbase here. That will require alloys, which we just spent a bunch of our alloys. Our and I'm going to buy in enough, just barely, and we probably shouldn't, but I'm going to buy enough to just get this Nashira starbase underway. So we'll get that done. That is building very quickly indeed. We have surveyed the system. Okay. So we're going to get our survey ships out and going. Absolutely great. Of course, from here, we're going to need more alloys because we're going council to need to start colonizing this area. We complete. have a council agenda ready now. So we can launch our infinite opportunities agenda, and we'll definitely do that. Our next agenda is going to be... Hmm. Interesting. Removing negative traits. Or we could get more unity, and we're definitely going to do that. Finding the voice. Beautiful. We've made first encounter with mysterious aliens in the Mecha system. We should find out whether they're capable of communicating with us and dedicate a portion of ourselves to translating their language if this proves to be the case. For now, they've been given the designation Res Aliens. Okay, so they are, of course, up over here. We need to assign an envoy, and we'll look into that. We discovered them over here. Okay. We've encountered advanced alien life. Contact seems inevitable. So, we're done in Nishira. We should head to Lachium next. So we'll move up over that way. Does this no longer require influence to build star bases? We're lacking alloys, yes. But I don't know if it... Okay, it does require influence. 75. That's fine. So we're just going to build this as soon as we can. Ah, okay, we'll get back to you in a moment. 
During a survey of Iran Tok 5, the ISS Zof Luar discovered deposits of rare crystals. These crystals have properties that make them extremely effective at focusing laser beams, and they're also a critical component in most advanced electronics. In addition, many cultures treasure them as decorations and adornments. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. Indeed, and we're going to. That'll be absolutely fine. But it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to continue to progress the Stinger Entity. Our goal? Galactic Dominance before the Hearts of Iron expansion is out. We'll see if we make it. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy Magar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.